So it's April, and most people are thinking about what they're going to plant in their garden in May. And here on the farm, of course, we're thinking about that, but we're also thinking about what we're going to plant in September, all the way into October in some cases. Um, what you see behind me here is about six to seven months worth of planting, um, not crops, plantings, um, because some of these plants won't even go into the ground until July, August time, and the maturity date on some of them won't be till September. So there's a lot of potential food behind me here. And what I wanted to go over today was the concept of an assembly line of food production. Because it's garden season, people are getting outside, starting to break ground in their garden and get prepared for May when most plants go into the ground in America at least. And I see this a lot where people get really excited in, at that time of year. They plant their entire garden before the weeds come and then weeds start to take over by July and the motivation just goes out the window and people stop caring about it. But if you have a system where you have the weeds under control, which is a whole other can of worms, that's another video for another time, but if you have that system under control and you know what plant dates work best in your climate and which harvest times are going to happen in your growing season, you can keep planting all the way up into at least August, even in Wyoming where I live. So we live in, this farm is in northern Wyoming, zone 4B near Yellowstone, and we get temperatures down to negative 30 in the winter. Our average last frost date is May 21st. Our average first frost date is September 21st. So that leaves us 120 days of growing outside. Not very much time compared to the rest of the country. It's the, lead, it's the shortest growing season in America. So for me to be a successful vegetable farmer, I have to have greenhouses. But the concepts that I use here on the farm are just as applicable in a garden, here, even here in Wyoming in a northern climate. So if you have any kind of nursery at home, you could even get away with some of the stuff I'm talking about on a windowsill. You could keep planting certain crops all the way up into July. You can keep planting carrots even in Wyoming up until 4th of July and still get a crop if you grow the right kind of carrot. So if you think of your garden or your land, whatever you're doing, if you're gardening, homesteading, farming, you think of it as an assembly line and you feed the soil so it's constantly fertile. That's a key detail because you can't just keep taking and not giving back. You have to feed the soil constantly with an abundant amount of nitrogen, organic matter, all that good stuff. If you're doing this organically at least or shooting for that. If you do that, you can really produce an incredible amount of food in a small space. So some of what we got here in front of me is shallots, celery, parsley, those three crops take forever to grow, but they produce a truckload of food once they're ready. So I like to have way more than I need, especially at this time of year, to make sure that I have enough for each planting that I'm doing. And then on the farm this year, we're gonna be doing about four separate crops of celery. Celery takes almost a month to grow. It, it takes almost a month to germinate and then about another six to eight weeks after that to grow into a regular plant. Then you plant it out in the ground and it takes another 80 days to get to maturity. So it takes forever. So one of my strategies to have a lot of extra plants uh, at this time of year to make sure that I have enough for the whole growing season. Um, and I'm planting for fall crop and winter crop all at once. Now you might not have enough space in your house to do something like that. But the concept I'm talking about is succession planting. So with crops that are quicker, like beets, for example, beets you could start in a six cell tray, 
every week of the year if you wanted to. And they're quick enough that they're gonna grow in about three to four weeks in that six cell tray. That plant will be ready to go in your garden. And then about a month after that, it'll be ready to harvest. And that leaves another opportunity for a new plant to go in. So if you have a grow light set up in your house, that would be ideal to keep that assembly line of production going. And it, it works really well with crops like beets, lettuce, which is a lot of what you see here. We got beets here, we got lettuce here lettuce here. Stuff like parsley is a really good one because that can be harvested many many times in your garden so that assembly line of crop keeps coming in as long as you keep harvesting it. Harvest, parsley can probably be harvested four or five times. You get a whole bunch of parsley four to five times at least. Depends on a lot of factors but those kinds of crops help that assembly line of production go keep going. And so it's really about keeping every square inch of your land in production at all times during the growing season. And it can yield you 12 month results, especially if you know how to grow things like carrots and storage crops. These onions and shallots, once they're cured, they will last at least until May of the following year, probably a lot longer if you get it at curing. Curing is a skill and I'm still getting good at it myself. I'm not great at it. And if you actually have a walk-in cooler or a fridge, you could store them for easily six to eight months after they're cured. But, uh, and carrots are the same thing. If you, if you get good at growing carrots that are a specific storage variety that are designed to last forever, you can do really, really well with carrots. Uh, and carrots are a great one to grow a truckload of in a very small space. So we keep planting carrots as soon as the beginning of the season starts, which for us, we just started planting carrots seriously about a week ago in greenhouses, but outside I would start planting them probably about first or second week in May. I'm gonna keep, I would keep planting carrots in the outside up until the 4th of July, maybe mid-July, depending on the variety. There's carrot varieties out there like Mocum and Napoli that will grow in 60 days into a really sizable carrot. So there's all sorts of strategies like that to keep your production going and have food that you can eat for much longer than the four month growing season. Another thing to think about with the assembly line of food is the crops that you choose. So if you tend to choose crops that are gonna be mature in 60 days or less, you're gonna have a lot more food in general from your land. Now that's not necessarily true for everything because some crops can be harvested multiple times even celery, parsley, stuff like that. But quick crops that put food in your fridge, especially food in your fridge that can last up to a month or so, are also really valuable. So what I have right here are a full bed of just red cherry radishes. It's not really the sexiest crop. You know, a lot of people are not wild about radishes, but radishes are delicious in more than just salad. You know, everybody thinks about it just putting radishes in salad. You could roast these things with olive oil, salt, and pepper. They're delicious. They taste totally different. They're creamy, and they last for a month in your fridge. If you take the top off like this, it lasts for a month in your fridge. Right over here, we have beets growing that, once these are ready, you can take the top off, and they'll last three to five months in your fridge. And these grow really fast if you have plants and you have the space in your garden ready to go. So root crops can really stretch that season of eating more than just greens. You know, it's good to have, if you have a root crop that can actually be grown in a plug or grows really, really fast, you know, radishes are 21 to 30 days. Most small radishes like this are 21 to 30 days from seed to harvest. That's incredibly fast, the fastest root out there. Beets are about 50 days, but if you do it, beets, in a plant cell, it's about 30 days in the ground during the growing season until you get that crop. So you can see how what I'm talking about, even in a four month growing season like we have here, you could really pump out the food if you keep the fertility going and if you keep the plants going in the ground. You just have to make it a weekly ritual to keep planting in your nursery or keep planting in your garden whenever you have a couple of spare spaces and you have your seeds ready to go, stick a couple radishes in the ground, 
and you have a couple meals in a month. It's a good strategy to think about. So we plant here on the farm all the way into October. Now we have greenhouses and some of them are heated greenhouses so it's a little bit different than your garden. But in a four month growing season like Wyoming, I keep planting in a garden up until late August probably. For, and that includes crops like radishes, um, spinach, stuff like that can be grown. It'll mature by September 21st, which is our first frost date on average. And stuff like spinach will last in the garden till at least November. I mean, probably December. Depends on how crazy the winter starts. But there's a bunch of strategies out there to make your existing frost-free growing season turn into a six to eight month season of eating and harvesting. And you're not even necessarily harvesting, you know, you're not going to be harvesting beets in December probably, but you're going to be, you could be eating beets in December. And eating is what growing food is all about, if you ask me. So the assembly line of food concept is something that I think can really change and revolutionize your small at home garden. You know, you're, you could do, this is a 40 foot by two, two and a half foot bed. If you did just this for your family, you could grow five to $600 worth of produce in one growing season, even in Wyoming, and even in 120 days. And if you're watching this, it's a pretty good chance your growing season is longer than that, unless you live in Alaska or something like that. So that assembly line of food concept is something that can really change the game for you. If you're good at this and you use planting schedule tools to keep up on it and just keep planting something every single week. And it also helps if you, you know, widen your taste buds a little bit and are willing to try things like radishes. You know, it, it's hard to do this if you are a picky eater. But I think if you open your your uh, open your mouth a little bit and try different things, you'll find that there's a lot more food you could produce in your backyard than you might have thought before.